make sure I record it because I had a really good lesson this morning and forgot to record it. So yeah, it sucks ass. Uh, <laughs> L'Hopital's we are looking for, in, partic in particular, we are looking for certain cases. We want zero over zero. We want infinity over infinity. Um, just going to run through one of these really fast and then we're going to call it good because we did these yesterday is we have to determine whether or not we can apply L'Hopital's and right now at this point we were looking for infinity over infinity or zero over zero. So the one that we did yesterday I believe was uh, C and we did A, B and C, is that right? So I'm going to take a look at D really fast and I want to know whether or not this is going to be um, infinity over infinity or zero over zero. As x approaches 2, then I know that when I put 2 in here, I'm going to get, just to check to make sure I get to use L'Hopital's, is that when I put 2 in here, I'm going to get 4 plus 2 minus 6, so this gives me 0. I put 2 in here, and I'm going to get the square root of 8 minus 4 minus 2, so this also gives me 0. So L'Hopital's will work, and I get to apply it here. And because I get to apply it, I would use it, and I would go ahead and do the derivative of each one. Now, with this one in particular, I don't actually have to use L'Hopital's. I can use some of the rules that we learned in our Calculus 1 class, which is I can factor out um, a y squared, or factor out a y out of the denominator, and then see what happens from there. But if I were to use L'Hopital's, then I would go ahead and do the derivative of the numerator, so the limit as y approaches 2. I would do the derivative of the numerator, which would give me 2y plus 1. And then the derivative of the denominator, I will have to use the chain rule. And so when I use the chain rule, I'm going to have a 1 half and then 8 minus y squared raised to the negative 1 half multiplied by 2y minus 1. And then I'd ask myself, can I do a, a direct substitution in there without getting um, a 0 over 0? Well, now I can put 2 in the numerator with no problems. So let's kind of clean up the denominator, so the limit, as y approaches 0. This 2 and this 2 will cancel. And I have 2y plus 1 over write this as 1 over the square root of 8 minus y squared minus 1. And then I'm going to go ahead and multiply everything by that square root so that it will be out of the complex fraction. Um, actually, um, I don't even have to do that because, and that should be going to 2, is because I can do the direct substitution now with no problems. So if I put 2 in the numerator, I don't get 0. And when I put 2 in the denominator, I don't get zero. So I only have to do the derivative once and only once, and then I'm good to go. So if I put two in the numerator, I'm gonna get two times two plus one, and then I put two in the denominator, I'm gonna get one over the square root of eight minus four minus one. And I can see that this is good to go in terms of the limit. I don't have to do anything further. Now, yesterday, is this is where we were. We were looking at the indeterminate forms where we have 0 times infinity or infinity minus infinity. So I'm going to take a look at A again. We're going to take another run at A. And we know that this is the 0 times infinity. So what we have to do is we have to manipulate this. I'm going to choose to manipulate tangent to make my life a little bit easier, unlike yesterday. I'm going to make my life a little bit easier and rewrite tangent in terms of sine and cosine. So I'm going to rewrite this as the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of 1 minus x. And I'm going to write this as the sine of pi x over 2 over the cosine of pi x over 2. Now I put the whole thing over that because of the fact that cosine, actually I'll just do it this way. I'll just put it underneath the one part. I'll just do it like that for right now. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to distribute the sine through on the 1 minus the x. So this is going to be equal to the limit as x approaches 1 from the left-hand side 
of the sine of pi x over 2 minus x the sine of pi x over 2 divided by the cosine of pi x divided by 2. Now I ask myself, does L'Hopital's still hold true? And if I were to put in 1, I would get 1 minus 1 in the numerator. So this is my check. So I get 1 minus 1 in the numerator, which does equal 0. And then in the denominator, I put in 1. I'm going to take the cosine of pi over 2, which is 0. So I can use L'Hopital's right away, right now, with no work. And I can just take the derivative. So that would be the easier way of doing it instead of what I was doing yesterday, which was making it way harder than it needed to be. So go ahead and do the derivative of the numerator and denominator and see if you can do the direct substitution at that point. I'm going to put this on pause. So when I do the derivative, I have the limit. I'm going to do that in black. The limit as uh, x approaches 1 from the left. I'm going to do the derivative of sine which is uh, cosine of pi over 2x. And then don't forget to do the derivative of the angle. So the derivative of the angle is going to be pi over 2. Okay, so now this part right here is the product rule. So I have to do the product rule in the numerator. So I'm going to ignore the denominator because it's a L'Hopital's. So I'm not using the quotient rule, but I do have to use the product rule. It's going to be the derivative of x first. So I'm going to do the derivative of x first, which is 1 multiplied by the sine of pi over 2x and then plus. And now I've got to do the derivative of sine times x. And the derivative of sine is cosine. So it's going to be x multiplied by the derivative of sine, which is cosine pi over 2x. And then I have to multiply that by the derivative of the angle, which is pi over 2. Okay, So that is the derivative of the numerator. Then I'm going to do the derivative of the denominator. And the, the derivative of the denominator, because I started out with, I have to go back, is cosine. So this is going to be negative sine of pi over 2x multiplied by its uh, derivative of the angle, which is pi over 2. Now, so this is going to be equal to, and I'm just going to, I can do the direct substitution now. So I'm going to go ahead and do the direct substitution now. So as x approaches 1, then when I'm having x approach 1, pi over 2 times 1 gives me just pi over 2. So when x approaches 1, I'm just, I'm evaluating each one of these as just pi over 2 now because x is 1. So the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So this very first term is going to be 0 multiplied by pi over 2 minus. And then inside the parentheses, I have 1 multiplied by the sine of pi over 2 is just 1. And so the sine of pi over 2, so times 1. And then plus, and then I have 1 multiplied by the cosine of pi over 2 is um, 0. So it's going to be times 0. So that's what is going to be inside the parentheses. And then in the denominator here, I'm going to get a negative. And then the sine of pi over 2 is just 1, and then multiplied by pi over 2. How are we doing? Any questions? And do you have any questions for me so far? Okay. So then I'm going to have pi over 2 minus 0 over negative pi over 2. And so what is my final answer? Oh, sorry. I got, I got that look. Thank God I can look at you all. Because I'm like, she's like, what the hell is she on? Sorry, it'll be 0 <laughs> minus 1 over negative pi over 2, my double negatives uh, cancel themselves out, and I so I have 1 divided by pi over 2, so in other words, it's going to be 2 over pi, and that's my final answer. Okay, what kind of questions do you have for me? I'm put the recording on pause.
Let's move on to the next example here. Oh, wait. Do you need me to hold here for a minute so you can finish writing this down? Does anyone need me to hold here? Yes. So every time we do Lopatals, if it if if we have to do Lopatals, there's gonna be some examples later where we actually don't have to. After we rearrange stuff, it ends up being like infinity times infinity, which is cool. It's just infinity. That every time we do Lopatals, um, we we consider the numerator separately than the denominator, so that we don't have to do the quotient rule unless the numerator or denominator has a fraction in it. So L'Hopital's allows us to um, do the derivative of the numerator separately than the derivative of the denominator. Any other questions? All right. So let's move on to the next example here. Now, with this example, what we have is we have the next which is infinity minus infinity. When we have infinity minus infinity, this is an indeterminate form in which we need to get it to be either zero over zero or infinity over infinity. If, if I have infinity multiplied by infinity, I'm good to go, but because this is a subtraction, I am not good to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rearrange things algebraically. And so I gotta remind myself, if I have some number, say three, and I multiply it by 2 over 2, it's 3 over 1. If I multiply by 2 over 2, that 6 over 2 is still 3. So what I'm using is I'm using this rule that said if I have A over B and I multiply by C over C, these are equivalent. I haven't changed anything. This is an equivalence that I have from algebra. Now the reason I'm saying this is because what I'm going to do on B is I'm gonna take this portion right here, the square root of x squared plus one, and I'm gonna multiply the numerator and denominator by itself. Now, I don't technically have a denominator other than one, so I'm gonna just put one right there as a placeholder. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that rule that says as long as I multiply the number by itself or the expression by itself or by a number that is the same, I'm not changing the value of it. So I'm going to multiply it by the square root of x squared plus 1 here and the square root of x plus 1 here. Now I'm only multiplying it by this portion of it. So I'm only multiplying it by the square root portion of it for right now. So then what I have is the limit as x approaches infinity of x minus. Now, because I have the square root multiplied by itself, I get x squared plus one in the numerator. And then in the denominator, I have x plus one. Or x squared, excuse me, x squared plus one. Okay. So all I did was I said, I'm going to use this rule over here that says, as long as I multiply it by the same thing, the numerator and denominator, I haven't changed the value of it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a single fraction. So by making this a single fraction, I need to multiply the x by the square root of x squared plus 1, both the x and the 1. And so this is going to be equal to the limit as x goes to infinity, not, not 8, infinity, of x, the square root of x squared plus 1, over the square root of x squared plus 1, minus x squared plus 1 over the square root of x squared plus 1. Now the whole reason I'm doing this is because I am going to try to bring these together. Once I bring these together as a single fraction, then I'm going to recheck to see whether or not I have infinity over infinity or zero over zero. So then I'm going to have the limit as x goes to infinity of x, the square root of x squared minus or plus one minus, and then don't forget this minus is going to distribute onto both of those two terms. So then it becomes minus x squared 
minus 1 over the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay, so where we are now is I have this, this single fraction that I can look to see whether or not I have 0 over 0, infinity over infinity. So then I can decide whether or not I can, I can use L'Hopital's or if I can use some other form of um, finding the limit. Now, when I put in infinity, this number here, which is x multiplied by itself squared plus 1, the square root of it, is going to be a larger number than x squared. So it will dominate and it will make it go to positive infinity, just it's not going to go very fast, but it is going to go to positive infinity. So as you get larger and larger numbers, the numerator will go to infinity. The denominator, as x goes to infinity, will also go to infinity. It's just not going to go as fast as, say, x squared, but it is going to go to infinity. So what I have now is infinity over infinity. So because I have infinity over infinity, I can use L'Hopital's. Or if I'm not a fan of doing derivatives like this, because it will be interesting. I'm not going to say it's bad. I'm just going to say it is delicious. For those of you who had me before, it's delicious. Almost scrumptious to try to do these derivatives is I can use what I learned in, in Calculus 1, which is I can try to see if I can factor out an x squared. So from Calculus 1, we learned that when we have x squared plus 1, I can factor out, I can rewrite this as x squared, and then 1 plus 1 over x squared. So I'm factoring out an x squared out of those two terms, and then, so what that allows me to do is write this as x, the square root of 1 plus 1 over x squared. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do that to both of the square roots, because I'm trying to avoid doing the derivatives of the numerator, because it's going to be product chain rule for the very first term. And I'm trying to avoid it. I can do it, and I'll be happy to do it for you all, but if I can avoid it, I'm going to do it. So then this is going to be equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of my numerator is going to be x multiplied by x, the square root of 1 plus 1 over x squared, and then minus x squared minus 1 over x, the square root of 1 plus 1 over x squared. I'm going to stop. I'm going to ask if anyone has any questions before I move on. So now, what I'm going to do is I've got in the numerator, I'm going to just rewrite this as the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared, the square root of 1 plus 1 over x squared, minus x squared minus 1 over x and then 1 plus 1 over x squared. Are we cool so far? All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to divide everything by x. And the reason I'm going to divide everything by x is because this x in the denominator is the problem. So I'm going to divide everything by x. Or I'm going to ask myself, if I were to put in x goes to infinity at this point, what's going to happen? So I'm actually going to divide everything by x first, though. So I'm going to divide everything by x. And I get the limit as x approaches infinity. Of when I divide each term by x, I'm going to divide this by x, I'm going to divide this by x, and I'm going to divide this by x. And so I'm going to have x multiplied by 1 plus 1 over x squared minus x 
minus 1 over x all over the square root of 1 plus 1 over x squared. Okay, so now I'm going to do direct substitution. I'm going to put in infinity. As x goes to infinity, this goes to 0. Just that 1 over the x squared portion goes to 0. As x goes to infinity, that portion goes to 0. That portion goes to 0. And so what I end up with is, as x goes to infinity, is I end up with infinity minus infinity numerically, not like we did before. So any large number minus itself is 0 divided by 1, which is 0. So that's where it goes. And that's the final answer. The answer is 0. Does anyone have any questions for me? For this example, as x goes to 0, then I'm going to end up with a 0 multiplied by infinity. So I have a 0 multiplied by infinity, and this is an indeterminate type. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to either divide one by the other. In particular, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one right here. And I'm going to use the fact that if I have, this is the algebra that I'm using, if I have um, 1 over 1 over a, that this is the same thing as a. So I'm going to reverse this for this portion right here. Is I'm going to do 1 over 1 over the square root. So with 1 over 1 over the square root, I'm going to rewrite this as the limit as x approaches 0 from the right-hand side of the sine of x over 1 over the square root of 1 minus x over x. Now, I'm going to use another algebra that says if I have 1 over 1 or a over b, then this is going to be the same thing as b over a. So I'm going to rewrite this portion right here as the reciprocal, but I'm still going to keep it in the denominator. So I'm going to write this as the limit as x approaches 0 from the right-hand side of the sine of x over the square root of x over 1 minus x. So I'm going to stop because I see the furrowed brows. For those of you who are streaming your video and you're thinking, WTF is she doing now? So I'm going to stop this. We have this rule that says, if I have the square root of A over B, this is the same thing as the square root of A over the square root of B. So I can, I can take the square root of each one individually. Now, if I have 1 over 1 over then I can rewrite this as the square root of b over the square root of a, which is the same thing as the square root of b over a. Does that answer your question? Yeah, you can split it apart. Okay. Yep. What other kind of questions do you have for me? See how easy that was? She just unmiked herself. She asked the question. Please engage in this class. Be awesome if you all could do that, just to say, hey, I'm here, I'm alive. I'm loving this whole social distancing thing. This is the best we've ever had in our entire lives. Oh, so, not only do I have my three grown children with, living with me and my, um, my daughter, my son's pregnant wife, and my sister here, and my husband and myself, my brother texts me and says, hey, what are you doing for Easter? And I text back, social distancing is what I'm doing. He goes, I'll be there on Friday. So not only do I have an entire freaking house full of people, my brother and his girlfriend are coming over. I said, you're not bringing the nephews, are you? Because 
holy shit, I'm running out of space out of my house. And he goes, no, they've got other things to do. And I'm like, thank the F God that I don't have anyone else coming over. So much for social distancing. Mm -hmm. I just had to get that out there. That's how I am right now. Okay. Let's go back to calculus now. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to avoid Easter altogether. I'm not going to worry about it. And I have grown children. I have to don't have to do this stupid Easter. Sorry. I don't have to color eggs and make a mess. So I was thinking I'm not going to do nothing for Easter. Now, no, we are going to be doing the whole de Easter dinner. Whatever. Whatever. Anyways. Oh, crap. I was recording all that. Okay. <laughs> sucks uh going back to our limit here so now we ask ourselves does L'Hopital's work and the answer is well let's check if I put in as x goes to zero I'm going to end up with zero in the or zero and not infinity I'm going to end up with zero in the numerator and zero in the denominator so yes I can use L'Hopital's at this point and do the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator separately so um I know, I don't know why people are still going to Walmart. And I know down here, they're only allowing so many people in. So you have to wait in line, not really social distancing to get into Walmart, which is kind of, whatever. Done. I want you all to finish that problem off. I'm going to put this on pause for a minute. And I want you all to finish off doing the derivative of the numerator separately than the denominator, please. Actually, I'm looking at this. I'm thinking, what am I going to make him do that? Can you put zero in? Not yet. So you do have to do the uh, derivatives. Okay, forgot to start the recording. So let's start over. I'm not going to erase, but I'm going to start over. So when I when I started back here, I did the, the derivative of sine, which is cosine, and now I'm working with the denominator itself. So the denominator is the square root of one um, x over 1 minus x. So I'm going to just rewrite the square root as, as an exponent. I have to use the chain rule and the, the quotient rule. So here's the quotient rule down in the green is I'm going to take the derivative of the numerator, which is 1, and then it's going to be multiplied by the denominator, which is 1 minus x. And then I'm going to do the derivative of the denominator, so minus. The derivative of the denominator, because it's a negative x, is going to be negative 1, and then multiplied by the numerator, which is x and then all over the denominator, which is going to be 1 minus x, the quantity squared. Now, I'm going to clean this up, and so I'm going to have 1 half, and then it's going to be x over 1 minus x raised to the negative 1 half. And then over here, I'm going to end up with, uh, I'm going to end up with a negative x, plus x, which gives me 1 minus x squared, which gives me 0. So I end up with 0. So in the denominator, I end up with 0 when I did the derivative. So what did I do that made this go wrong? Did I miss a sign somewhere? Did I miss a sign? Did I miss a sign somewhere? Wouldn't there still be one? Because you're doing one times one minus x. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. I'm like, God, what did I miss? Okay. So I end up with one half x over 1 minus x raised to the negative 1 half, and then I end up with 1 over, and then 1 minus x, the quantity squared. Okay? So now that is what the denominator equals. So I'm going to go back and put that in the right place. So this is going to be 1 half x over 1 minus x raised to the negative 1 half, then 1 over 1 minus x squared. So can I put 0 in here? Well, I can, but I'm just going to um, rewrite this slightly. So this is the limit as x goes to 0 from the uh, right-hand side of the cosine. Let me read uh, cosine 
x over. Now, this part right here is a 1 over x, 1 minus x to the 1 half. And the reason I'm telling you that is because I'm going to move that thing up. And I'm going to do the same thing with a 2. So then I'm going to be multiplying it by 2. I'm also going to be multiplying it by the um, x, 1 minus x, raised to the positive 1 half. And then I have 1 over 1 minus x squared. Because I have a fraction within a fraction, so those, those two fractions that were in the denominator, these two here that are in yellow, because it's 1 over 1 over, it's going to move them up into the numerators. So if I put in 0 now, then I'm okay. Because what I didn't want is 0 divided by 0, and I don't have 0 divided by 0. If I put in 0 now, the cosine is going to become 1. So what this is going to be equal to is this is going to be equal to the cosine of 0 is 1 multiplied by 2. And then I'm going to have 0, 1 minus 0 all over 1. So my final answer, because now I can do the direct substitution, is going to be 2 times 0 divided by 1, which is 0. And so that one worked out OK. After, of course, I brought my 1 back I dropped initially. So my final answer is this on 0. Now my goal was, and I didn't make it there, which is cool, is to do the final forms, which is when we have these. So I'm going to go back so you can so you can write the notes. But we're going to do these tomorrow. I know I'm over time, but we're going to do these tomorrow is we're going to do the indeterminate um, where I have 1 raised to the infinity, I have 0 raised to the 0, or I have infinity raised to the 0. So this is when we have to do the natural log. So I'll do those tomorrow, and we will finally put this stuff to bed. But here's my final answer, and here's the notes. And if you need to stay a little longer to write the notes down, you can. But otherwise, you all have a good day. Stay safe. We got this. Even if I have a house full of people going nutty, we got this. Have a great day.